Frightful's Mountain, The Ices Get on Wing, Part 1, Page 32, Chapter 3. Drum, Duchess, and Lady glanced at the rabbit. It was not part of their food vocabulary, so they kept right on screaming. They were hungry for waterfowl or land birds. Frightful ate the rabbit while the Ices watched twisting their heads from side to side and calling, Spee! when she swallowed. Duchess walked up to her, screaming in air-splitting decibels. Mm. Then the Ayas lifted her wings and attacked. Frightful backed off a few steps and stared at the young falcon. Lady and Drum lowered their bodies horizontally and charged Frightful. The Ices had become dangerous, they were practicing for the competitive world they would soon face. Frightful wanted no part of this schooling. She lifted herself into the air, fanned her wings, and flew to her tree stub. Chup came home. He brought no food to the Ices. Duchess charged him, mouth open, feathers lifted. He sat still and panted in the sun. His feathers were rumpled and he held his head low. Chup had not eaten for a day and a half. He was weak. That did not matter to Duchess. She attacked him. Chup, like Frightful, was forced to leave. Alighting on the dead limb of an oak, he looked down and saw the rabbit. Without hesitating, he dropped down onto it and ate, fending off the ices. He could still dominate them. Chup had Catholic tastes. He was nine years old. Each winter, he migrated to South America. When the El Nino rains changed the balance of nature and birds were scarce, he died, uh, dined on mammals and iguanas. Rabbit was food, and he was hungry. Lady and Duchess stopped screaming. Chup was eating rabbit. It must be food. Painfully hungry, Lady led a raid. She sneaked up to Chup. When he covered the food from... With his wings and body, Duchess reached in from the rear and snatched the rabbit. She tore off small bites, but did not like the taste. She shook her head and sent the meat flying against the rocks. Chup finished eating and flew off. Drum, who had now seen both parents eat this new food, dragged what was left under the overhang. Taking a bite in his beak, he swallowed. It was not delicious, but it was satisfying. He plucked another bite, then another. Drum was a survivor. When he was satisfied, Duchess and Lady tried the strange food again. They ate gingerly, partially satisfying their hunger. By sundown, the Peregrine family was fed, if not full, but more importantly, the family had a new housing arrangement. The Ices were now old enough to attack anything in sight, including their parents, and with that, their parents had sensibly, sensibly turned the airy over to them. Frightful and Chup did not return to the nest site. Frightful slept on the stub of the pine tree, Chup on the dead limb of his oak. That evening, they all watched orange and pink clouds float against a turquoise blue sky. Chup felt restless. His offspring could not only eat on their own, but also defend themselves. Just before sundown, he spread his wings and soared out over the valley. He climbed high. He spiraled down. He skimmed along the river. With quick wing pumps, he shot up and out of sight of Frightful and the Ices. Just before the sun set, he sped earthward, landing lightly on his dead branch. He heard the Ices chittering, saw Frightful sitting erect on her stub, and let his nictating membranes slip across each eye. His lower eyelids closed upward and cut out the last of the daylight. The cliff side was quiet. The Peregrine family was on schedule with summer. The Ices were completely feathered, feeding themselves and aggressive, and the parents were perched alone. With the help of Mole, Frightful now regularly brought food to the Ices. Each morning, she flew 
southward to Mole's farm and brought back strange but nourishing foods, which she dropped to the youngsters. Chup, who had gotten thin, doing the job of two parents, began to put on weight. Mole also gained weight. The old hound had the can canniness of a wolf. It didn't take him long to realize he had a hunting companion who was quicker on the pickup than he. The first two times Frightful went off with the game, he had flushed. He could do nothing but bark. Then he learned that she didn't like groundhogs. She had tried one and abandoned it to him. She also didn't like skunks or rats. He chased them all. She got the rabbits and pheasants. He got the rest. Mole and Frightful went hunting almost every day. When they had harvested the most conspicuous and abundant animals of the farm fields, Mole led her to more distant fields. The animals they left behind would breed, and their offspring would breed, until there were too many for their food supply. Then the two hunters would return and adjust the numbers again. When the fields yielded little game, they worked the barnyards and farm gardens. Together they kept the rabbits and groundhogs from eating the farmer's crops and the rats from eating the corn stored in cribs and bins. And so Frightful hunted with Mole, as she had hunted with Sam, and became the provider. Chup and the Isis needed. The Isis grew properly. At five weeks of age, they were as big as their parents. Only a few bits of down on their heads and shoulders and their brown-gray color told how old they were. On a hot day in early July, Duchess sat at the edge of the airy. Her wings lifted to her cool, keep her cool. A wind blew over her. It moved more rapidly over the top of her wings than under them and created lift. Up she went. She hung above the ledge for a moment, became confused, and stalled herself out by moving her wings and changing the wind flow. She fell back to the airy. Lady faced the wind, lifted her wings, and was airborne. She, too, fell back. She sat on her heels. Something new and wonderful had happened to her. She had been in the air with space between herself and the cliff. She and the wind had managed this wonder, which had changed her sense of who she was. She was a bird. She must fly. A few minutes later, Duchess flapped her wings. She was lifted up and over Lady's head like a bit of thistledown. She alighted on a rock where, somewhat astonished, she looked down on Drum and her sister. From them, she looked into immeasurable distances, above, below, and to all sides, then nervously preened her feathers. Frightful came home with a rabbit and dropped it in the airy. Duchess jumped to get it, fell, spread her wings, and sailed. Quickly closing them to her body, she dropped down on the airy. She ate what was now delicious rabbit to her. That afternoon, a thunderstorm darkened the river valley. Chup came home from his hunt. Retreating to his dead limb, he watched the lightning buzz around the cliff. Frightful flew from her stub and walked under an overhang near the airy, just as rain poured out of the clouds. The Isis crouched against each other, holding their feathers at slight angles that shed the water in rivulets. They shook, cleared water from their eyes with their nicotating membranes, and listened to the thunder boom. When the storm passed and the sun came out, Chup set out over the valley not to hunt, but to check on populations of doves and ducks, but simply to fly. He coasted on downwinds, rode like a water skier on turbulent winds, and soared on light breezes. Frightful f followed his flight with her keen eyes until he disappeared in a cloud. Then she left the rain shelter and returned to her tree stub. She sat quietly, from the airy, Drum, Duchess, and Lady watched everything that moved. The ocular pectin of their eyes had developed. 
they could see the movements of an ant walking as far away as the distant river. They studied and noticed, noted and memorized. They collected visual memories that would serve them for the rest of their lives. Drum, fascinated with his acute vision, walked to the edge of the eyrie to watch young swallows in their nests and cliff holes across the river. A wind struck him from the side. He flapped his wings to keep his balance, and he, too, was flying. He soared along the cliff and landed with a crash on a ledge about a hundred feet away. Elegantly, he folded his wings to his body and stood tall. He watched the rain water fall from the leaves of the forest below and a tree frog vibrate his throat with song. Suddenly, Frightful plummeted out of the sky and landed beside him. Drum called, See! and opened his beak to be fed. Chup, who was soaring under the purple-blue cloud bottoms, saw Frightful with the fledgling and flew down to his dead limb. He called her away from Drum. The fledgling must survive on his own. Once again, Frightful's early training did not help her with Peregrine Protocol. She heard Chup scolding her, but remained with Drum. Companionship with Sam had colored her concept of life. Young, old, bird, boy, girl, dog. Companionship was comforting. Early the next morning, she flew off to hunt with Mole. Drum awoke and stared at the valley. Crows winged past calling out messages to family members to stick together. A leaf spiraled toward him on an updraft. He did not try to fly again. Mother would come back. Frightful did return to Drum with a rabbit late in the morning. Drum did not eat it. He had not cast a pellet this morning. Birds of prey eat meat, bones, feathers, and fur. They absorb the nourishment and cast out the indigestible parts in a tidy pellet. They cannot eat again until the pellet is cast. Drum sat quietly, food before him, waiting for his body to go through this cycle.